All right, so today, what am I going to explain? Well, minimum viable product. It's a product management framework. Obviously, it doesn't do everything, but it plays an important role. But what I'm going to do is a little different than what you see everywhere else. I'm going to explain MVP and where the gaps are that data can fill. What you'll find is data teams are trying to deliver more value back to the business and product managers are trying to become more data driven in their daily role. So when you combine the two traditional product management frameworks and your data enabled thinking, well, what do you get? You get a lot better and more effective frameworks. So let's start with why you need an MVP. Why, why, what are we doing? Why would you put this in place in the first place? And, most product management frameworks have, they're addressing one of the core problems with creating products. And in this case, the core problem is the people you're building for can't articulate their own needs. They don't understand how data and AI can create value or how it solves any of their problems. Most people who use AI don't even know they're using it. And that's a result of a Boston Consulting Group and MIT study where they asked people, do you use AI? AI in your daily role, in your job. Majority of them said no. Then the researchers said, okay, so here's what products and here are some paradigms where, you know, we're using AI. Then they asked the same question again, do you use it? And yes, the majority of people that said, no, we barely use it or we don't use it at all, suddenly changed their answer to we use it quite a bit. So people don't know. They don't know they're using it, so they can't build any sort of intuition about it. We have to teach this through some demonstrations. We have to show them so that they'll learn. So, but that comes later. when They don't know today, so how do we build products for them if they don't know what they want the product to do themselves? That's the challenge. That's where MVP can help. So in my data and AI product management course, I teach frameworks that are specifically built for data and AI products. MVP was not specifically built for data and AI products, but that doesn't mean you can't use the, those constructs effectively for data and AI products. But what I want to do here is explain how traditional product management frameworks can become more data driven. And so you sort of get a perspective on how data professionals can use our skills, transfer into product management and how product managers can integrate data into their daily jobs into these frameworks. So an MVP, it should be a data-driven process, but it really rarely is at this point. Uh, the frameworks that I've built, really they just come from these types of struggles where I'm building and delivering technical products, but over almost 30 years of my career, I've also seen a ton of them fail, especially when they aren't data-driven. So let's introduce data into the MVP. And first, Let's explain what this is. Let's just start with a really simple definition. So an MVP, minimum viable product, is the simplest definition of a product that can be sold uh, to a market. And it's based on something called lean startup, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. The MVP, it allows a team to collect feedback from customers and learn from their needs and preferences. Basically them using the product is how we gather data about whether or not they need the product. So you're beginning to see, uh-oh, there's a little bit of a chicken and an egg problem, isn't there? It's connected to data-driven thinking. Once I introduce technology into the workflow, and this is part of my maturity framework, I can gather data about how customers perform that work. I can baseline what happens today, and I can measure how new features improve the workflow, but I can't do that until I introduce technology into the workflow. No technology, no opportunity to gather data. So an MVP is important, why? It can provide some basic cost savings, why? We don't have to build the entire product, minimum viable, it's the smallest set of features that we can use to send it to market. So it's cheaper to build these. You can build them quickly. You can think about it as a pilot or proof of concept, but really it's helping us validate the need. And in that way, it's very user centric. We are giving it to users and then watching what they do with the product. 
we can launch faster and that can be a business. I mean, startups are built around MVPs or it can be a new product line or an update to an existing product line, but it enables us to get to market faster. And we may be able to get some buy-in for this. A lot of times in order to get that big budgetary amount, you have to prove that you can deliver something. So again, that pilot, that proof of concept, can we get that stakeholder buy-in, client buy-in, investor buy-in, whoever it is that has to authorize it and green light our budget, can we get it? So it really helps the team test and refine their product idea before investing too much cash into it. The other thing that it does is when you think about iterations, we think of this agile framework, but if we twist that a little bit more towards the data science methodology, it helps really support a culture of experimentation and iterative improvement. So product management should support rapid iterations and it should create a direct line of feedback between customers and your internal technical team. It doesn't always happen, but frameworks like these can facilitate it. So the problem is when you don't have data, this can get very, very fuzzy. We start having opinions. And what the MVP can do is solve a major problem with just product management and product strategy in general. But an MVP by itself without data has this problem as well. Most of the next steps here, because you have to now figure out what should we do for the MVP? What features should we put in it? What problems should we solve? Most of these next steps start with an opinion and then somebody gathers data to support the opinion or decision that's already been made. If you're a data professional, you've seen this way too often. This is where we can deliver significant value. And it's one of the reasons why data professionals make really good product managers and product managers are trying to integrate data in the same way that I'm sort of explaining into their more traditional frameworks. We need to think about this in terms of experimental thinking. So we know a hypothesis requires evidentiary support. So the purpose of experimentation, obviously validate or refute a hypothesis, and you can look at the MVP. Well, you look at the MVP as a hypothesis, can't you? We could look at this and say, huh, the MVP is our hypothesis. And that's, uh, that's a better way of evaluating. It's more data driven way. An effective MVP re really requires identifying the customer pain points. We have to describe what competitors are there and what products are already on the market. Uh, we have to test the MVP, validate it, test our hypothesis to make sure it is a valid MVP. And we have to prepare to ship something to production. You can see it's rapid. It's good. The MVP should teach the core problem. Should teach the core problem that the product aims to solve. And it's an, it's a mechanism really for gathering customer insider customer usage data. And that can help us figure out if we've gotten this right or if we're amiss. MVPs are limited to a very small number of features. Essentially, this is our hypothesis for this is the minimum number of features and functionality that will create enough value for customers to pay for, and also to understand how the product fits their needs, fits into their workflow, provides something that they care about. And you can, you're hearing sort of this hypothesis. I believe that X or something is a customer pain point. And the MVP is the experiment to validate or refute that hypothesis that this is really a pain point we need access. We have to be able to gather data. And this is part of my maturity framework uh, that basically says you have to build these things incrementally. Why? Because you need access to workflows, especially customer workflows, to gather data about how they function and operate today. So we are delivering value incrementally in sort of these, you call them mini MVP sprints, uh, but it's, it's a very similar intent between maturity and MVP. Uh, but that's just a small part of solving this bigger problem. We also need frameworks for opportunity discovery and figuring out what should we be building in the first place? Who's been successful with the MVP framework? Uh, you could think of Amazon, Uber, Spotify, 
each one of those had a very, very minimum viable product, they released it to market and iterated to make it something that customers truly loved. And they went from, and this is one of my, my frameworks, is from a sort of a feature to a product and from a product to a much larger platform that offers multiple products in some cases. It's the MVP is that initial feature set that you're going to build off of and build out a longer vision and longer implement a longer strategy. And it supports the concept that data teams must deliver value incrementally while setting up for bigger wins. And the MVP answers the question with all the features we could build, which ones should we build first? And if you don't have any access to data, you really have to put technology in place in order to gather the data you need to figure some of that out. And so the MVP is, it's a viable way of doing that. We have to define really some basic principles about the customer. We need to understand their workflow. We want to understand their intent. What is their desired outcome? What outcomes do they care about? What outcomes can we impact? What experiences do they want? Sometimes it's not an outcome. Sometimes it is an experience that the customer wants. And then finally, we have to understand how much value we're giving the customer and how much of that value they're willing to give back to us as a company. So what's the point to all this? Truly one of the most valuable skills in product management or any business role. If you can find high value problems to solve, you will never go hungry. You will never be without a job. Problem discovery, it's one of the biggest challenges in product management and solution validation fits in right behind. It's the second biggest. So the NVP helps you do both in an iterative low cost framework. If you just add a little bit of data, it becomes a very, very powerful tool not only to gather data, but to figure out what we should be building and stay close to customer needs, customer demand. Really quick, if you're thinking about taking my data and AI product management certification course, or if you want to bring me in, all you have to do, go to datascience.vin. Courses are there. You can reach out and contact me there as well. Next video, we'll be talking about more frameworks with sort of this data driven dropped on top of it, hopefully helping you understand how to become more value centric and deliver more value to the business. Or potentially, if you're thinking about making a move in either direction, becoming a data or AI product manager from a traditional technical product manager role, or you're coming in from the data individual contributor side or data leadership side, I can help out with that.